Um, I'm John Schieber, uh, and I'm very lucky to be here with Jesse Volmar, the co-founder and CEO of FarmLogs. We're going to take a trip from the virtual to the physical. Uh, I have a quick question for everybody in the audience. I really want y'all to, to answer honestly. How many of y'all have ever been on a farm? Raise your hand if you have ever set foot on a farm. A soybean and corn farm. Soybean and corn. How many hands are up? Ah, there are a few. All right, all right. Y'all know what you're talking about a little bit. So, um, it's interesting, the, uh, <laughs> the plight of the farmer these days, and I wanted, Jesse, just for you to set the stage for folks who haven't necessarily been on a row crop farm, what's going on in the farm industry today? What are, what are the challenges? Set the stage for me. Yeah, well, we've seen major advancements in agriculture um, throughout the history of farming in both equipment and then more recently genetic improvements um, but today, farmers are faced with this incredible challenge of increasing food production and doing it without getting any more land at all. And so we're going to have to accomplish massive increases in efficiency on the farm. And at Farmlogs, you know, we really believe that data science is the next big wave of evolution on the farm and how we can dramatically increase the output. Now, why, how did you come to this yourself? And, and you know, people don't necessarily associate farming with, with, with big data or technology. How did you make the, the jump from, from working, you were a consultant before, right, to, to working on the farm? Yeah, so I, I um, actually grew up working on my family's farm. So my family is a fifth generation farm. We've been, um, I, I grew up, you know, actually driving tractors and spending time in the fields, but was just in love with technology, in love with the internet, started working in that space, like you mentioned, had a, an IT consulting company where we were building custom enterprise software. And um, it was just this nagging problem on the periphery where I could see that all the people that I cared about, all the farmers that were around us, were suffering by not having any new cutting edge technology coming into their businesses. And so um, while you know, we had seen that farmers traditionally were early adopters of technology right. and had even things like auto guidance on their machines 20 years ago, the innovation had really stalled out. And so the next wave of, of technology coming to the farm just hadn't happened yet. Right. Um, the internet changes the way we can think about software and, and data and analytics. Right. And none of that was happening in the farm. And so we had to start there. So how? How big is the market? You talk about this being a sort of periphery problem. How big is the market for data science on the farm? I mean, you had, you had Climate that was bought by Monsanto for what, like $400 million or something? $500 million? It was a billion dollar acquisition, and billion Monsanto's dollars. gone right. on the record saying that this is a $20 billion opportunity. I believe, you know, there's, there's several ways to make massive, large scale impact here. And, um, and, you know, we're right at the center of all of that. Right. So what exactly is it that you're doing for the farmers? So we actually help them quantify all the variability in their fields and help bring them new information that they wouldn't otherwise have any access to at all. So imagine if you were trying to build your startup and you didn't have analytics or metrics to, to right. know how your users are using your product. Um, that's kind of like the relationship farmers had with their fields, where instead of being able to have information come into them, they would literally have to go to the field to discover what's happening in the field and understand the conditions in the field. That would be like going to your users and asking them, how many times do you log into our product, right? right? Instead of having that kind of information just flowing into you about your business and about how you can improve and react to what's happening, um, farmers were, were lacking that. And so we actually leverage immense amounts of remotely sensed data where we can detect precipitation at the field right. instead of having to make a trip there, instead of having a sensor there, we can actually analyze at very high resolution the health of a field, so the crop's actual health throughout that, and, and help farmers pinpoint issues in the field while they can still do something about it. Now, now one of your, I won't say competitors, but one of your peers was quoted in, uh, I think it was a uh, an Inc. magazine article or, or Fast Company or something saying ag tech is the next Facebook. Um, is that true? Is there going to be one winner in the space? Are there still things or technologies that people need around this sort of farming ecosystem to help it develop? I think it's a really large ecosystem. I mean, Farmlogs, I, I believe, sits you know kind of at the center of a lot of this, where we're helping 
the farmer actually take advantage of all these new data sources that exist. We're not going to go build every new data collection mechanism, right? We're going to help farmers get access to that and analyze it for them. Um, so there's really interesting companies being built. I've got other friends that are building um, businesses like Terra Avion, where they actually collect uh, imagery, multispectral satellite imagery, through a network of pilots that are physically flying planes and capturing all this new source of information for growers. Um, and then there's uh, another friend of mine um, has a company called Tule that's right. building an evapotranspiration sensor that you can actually put in a field and it'll measure the combination of evaporation and transpiration right. off of the field, which is really interesting. And, and these are fr friends that you've made through sort of the Y Combinator experience, or both of these guys Y Combinator? Yeah, companies? both those companies went through Y Combinator. Okay, so um, talk to me a little bit about how you pitch a Silicon Valley VC on a, on a farm story. Like, you're, you're going into a meeting and you're telling these guys, we've got a data solution for farmers. What is that, what is that conversation like? How long did it take people to sort of warm up to this idea of farming as, as an industry that um, tech could disrupt. Yeah, well, I know that when we started the business back in 2012, um, it, was, it was very different than it is today. Right. And so at the time, ag tech wasn't really a term that had been coined yet. I don't think there was much buzz around the industry. That's changed a lot. Uh, I think that people recognize there's a great business to be built in this space, probably several billion dollar companies that will be built in this space. Um, and that's really exciting to anyone. If you can just articulate the value you can create for the customer. And, and you know, in our instance, we have one out of three farms in the country using our product today, which is very vast distribution into this right. market, which we're, it's, it gets exciting. So I I'd actually thought it was 25%. My, my, my numbers are a little outdated. Um, how, but when you launched in, in January last year, or when you sort of as of January 2014, you were looking at 5% of family uh, of farms were, were using Yell's technology. How did you, how, how, what does that expansion look like? Was that all, or, pardon the pun, organic growth? <laughs> or did you, uh, did you have to, uh, to, to sort of push it? What does that look like? Um, you know, we, we have found that if you can put a compelling message in front of the farmer where um, it's something that they know is going to make a big difference in their business and their operation. They will gladly sign up as long as you enable that to be a frictionless experience. And so we've grown really, really rapidly, like right. you mentioned, um, to represent now, you know, new news. One in, one in three farms <laughs> in America are using farm logs. Um, you know, that's, that's really exciting. And, right. and it just comes from solving real problems for them, giving them access to information that they can't get anywhere else. Right. And so you... Um what does that mean in terms of revenue? Well, so we've actually felt that um, there was a, a big opportunity to go and capture um, large market share, where we made First. a lot of our product right. free up front. Right. We're now in a really good position to actually bring these truly amazing products that, that generate vast amounts of extra profit for the farmer to market. And, and now with that distribution, right. we can actually succeed in doing that. Right. So do you need more capital to do that? Like, would you be looking to raise more money next year? Or, or are, you, are you sort of set right now and it's about iterating on, on the product line or the different services that you're selling? Um, I think you know, we're in a great position to go tackle the market that we're after. Right. We've been really fortunate to have been well capitalized up to this point. We're also a very capital efficient right. um, business. So you know, we, we actually um, operate in the Midwest, which is, I think, the right thing for our business because that's where our customers are there. It also means that our, our overhead is a little bit lower right. than, than what it would have been if we would have stayed here in right. Silicon Valley. So, but are, are you monetizing on things like, I, I know you, you had shown me backstage a new sort of hardware device, right? Or a relatively new hardware device. And, and are you selling that to the farmer or is that still free? Do you, yeah. oh my God, he has one in his pocket. Oh, me... Amazing, almost like it was planned. Uh, so that's, that's the, uh, that's the new, new tech, the new new tech from y'all. Yeah, so this is a product that creates this beautiful experience for farmers where instead of them having to think about transferring data out of their machines, they can simply plug this in. It works out of the box, and it's got a modem built in. So it, it peers off of Verizon's 3G network. And um, we're able to then automatically build the, the yield maps of their fields for them. And yeah, we, we charge for this. So farmers pay us um, $750 a year mm. um, to have a subscription to this device. And that, that fits into 
the overall ecosystem of farm logs. And that's per that's that's 750 per per thresher or whatever per year. Is that right? So yeah, how many per, per machine per, per year? And how many machines typically are on a on average farm? So many farms only own about one combine. Right. Um, they're Combine's they're um, equipment that costs anywhere from 400 to 600 thousand dollars per machine. So it's a right. massive capital expense to to be able to operate a farm nowadays. And, and these are family businesses. These are small businesses that um, don't have you know, massive, massive budgets for these things. So typically, um, a farmer is going to have one. Right. A large farm here in America would have three or four of these combines. OK. And you mentioned being a Midwestern company. Um, did y'all start out that way? So we started here in Mountain View, California. And um, we spent some time going through Y Combinator which was tremendous, and we love it out here. But at the same time, you know, our business impacts um, the, the physical world, the real world, and 100% um, and of our market is outside of Silicon Valley. I think it, this is a great place to build a company if your early adopters, your users, are going to be in the area around you, right. which is true of many companies. But for us, because we're focusing on people growing corn and soybeans, which is like everything between San Francisco and New York, <laughs> we really had to get there to be right. in the same world that our customers live in. And, and for has that impacted y'all negatively at all in terms of fundraising, in terms of, of, of like telling the story to investors or getting them, getting them interested in the company? I don't think so at all. We have really great investors that are, that are tremendous. Um, we happen to have raised capital from uh, the business that we thought was the right partner, Drive Capital, in our Series A round. And that, that's that been a tremendous relationship. A couple partners that were out here um, right. and, and very much plugged in the community, they were both ex-Sequoia partners. They right. left Sequoia to go start their own fund. Right, Drive, Drive is a Columbus-based shop, right? Yeah, so they actually picked up. Like, Mark had lived here. He's on our board. And he had lived here all his life and had worked at Sequoia. And he, he saw an opportunity to go build a world-class venture capital firm in the Midwest. And that was really aligned with our interests, right. um, having a partner like that early on that was involved. And so, you know, but we still have great investors out here, too. Right. D do you find it isolating to be a tech company in Ann Arbor, though? Because people don't really think about Ann Arbor as, as, as a hotbed of, of, of new startup technology. Yeah, you know, I was surprised. I had no clue how much of a technical community there was in Ann Arbor. Um, we picked it because of University of Michigan and the, the great reputation that comes with that, the massive alumni network of right. people that went to school there. But it turns out there's actually a lot of startup activity in Ann Arbor. And while it's not the same as here, I would never claim that to be the case, um, it is, it's really exciting to be surrounded by other startups in the area. So we, we've been really happy with it. Really? OK, well, that's good to know. Um, what, as you look ahead at sort of what y'all are seeing as, as the future of the business, what is next for y'all? Like, where, where do you go from here? What sort of products are on the roadmap? Uh, so we have some very exciting new products that we're going to launch for next year. We're not ready to talk about those yet. Um, but but there's, there's some fundamental breakthroughs in what we can actually deliver to the farmer. And it, it leads to dramatically increased yield. And, and that's very exciting for our company. Because these are some of the things that you know, when we started the business, we only would have dreamt of being able to do for farmers. And right. now they're all coming to reality where um, there's been sufficient change in the industry where now the equipment is advanced enough, the data sets now exist, right. and we've found um, innovative new ways to use both remotely sensed data and combined with crop models, which are scientific models of how crops develop and all the variables around them, right. with uh, machine learning to actually parameterize these models. And so we can do things that never used to be possible. So uh, big data is a big buzzword here in the Valley. There are lots of people who talk about it. Other than big data, what technologies do you see having an impact on the farm now? What else, like people mentioned drones, people are really excited about that, people are excited about new genomics technologies. Which things do you see having the biggest impact for, for the family farmer? I think right now the big challenge that the farm faces is trying to get better production off of the fields that they operate. And so they can do that in a couple ways. One is by being able to measure at a higher resolution what's happening in their fields. And so that leads to remote sensing right. and, and possibly even drones. Um, and then the other thing they need to be able to do is apply the science. And so there's a, a machine system side of this where there's some breakthroughs in the way we can actually apply precision right. control of nutrients and seed into right. the field. Um, you know, I mentioned those two great examples of companies that are building businesses that, that help collect new sources of information on the mm -hmm. farm. 
Does this, um, I mean, California's in the middle of, of a, a terrifying drought right now. Yeah. Is big data on the farm a solution to some of these problems? People have, have talked about the almond industry out here as being one of the contributors to that, or? It is. Well, we, can, we can model you know, the demands of, of water use efficiency in the plants. We can actually see what kind of rain is accumulating out in the field. And so in most of the Midwest, it's not irrigated lands. We actually are, are rain-fed land. And so you, you actually rely on rainwater to, to um, produce your crops. But on those fields that do have irrigation systems, we can actually show farmers exactly how much rain's been accumulating at the field, where then they can make smarter decisions about when to control the irrigation and, and eliminate waste. Um, one last question for you, and that's, that's sort of, do you, well, do you miss the valley at all? Or have you, have you found that, that, you know, there's this new home for you in the Midwest? Like, how often do you get out here? What sorts of things do you see as a difference between the two? Well, so I have lots of friends, and, and we do have investors yeah. here in Silicon Valley. So we get to still, I think, be a, a part of this community. And... Um, you know, w but we're very happy being in the Midwest, and I think it provides us a really unique opportunity to go build a business in a way that you couldn't necessarily have done it from here. Would you recommend other entrepreneurs sort of think about it? It depends on what kind of business you're building. Okay. If your customers are, um, are primarily in the Midwest, then absolutely. Right. And with that, I think we're done. Thank you so much for the time, Jesse. Appreciate it. Thanks. Cheers. Y'all have a good one. <laughs>